Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4 as we're going to be starting a new series today as the United Kingdom. So we had a patron vote for this campaign and it ended up turning out a little bit more competitive than the last one. Uh, also a lot more participation than the last one as well. Uh, I think I think uh, the patrons are in that same boat where they don't they don't get as excited about the modded series. And that just seems to be the general case across my channel that when I play with the mods, the uh, particularly those total overhaul mods, that it just doesn't... Uh, the views and such, they're just not as good as they are for, for when I play vanilla. So, yeah, we're doing another completely vanilla campaign here. Uh, you can tell from the checksum here. that uh, We don't even have any of the, the smaller mods that I talked about in the last uh, campaign. I'm not playing with any of those. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I did want to tell you guys what the results of the patron vote were. Uh, the exact results for those who are interested. So, the United Kingdom obviously won. They won 50% of the vote. So, uh, much more competitive. And then uh, Romania... The second choice uh, got 31% of the votes, and then Mexico got 19% of the vote. Uh, so Mexico got a little bit more support than they have in past patron votes, but so far not. That's, that's the third campaign that they, they're in the back. So I don't know if I'm going to have them in the next the next vote, guys. Uh, but Romania got pretty close there, and that would have been an interesting campaign. But yeah, I'm excited to play as UK. So let's go ahead and, and jump into this. Starting a new game, of course, 1936. And... We're going to be changing up quite a few things with the custom game rules, guys. This is not going to be the a typical UK campaign. And uh, that's the one reason why I'm not playing with one of the, the smaller mods that I had thought about doing. And that is the, uh, the Expert AI mod. Uh, so I've been wanting to check that mod out for a while. See if it actually does make the AI any good. Maybe look at the code and stuff. See precisely what it changes. Just to try and get a little bit more competitive AI. You know, we just tick this up. And we'll tick them up here. Uh, and this one as well. We're going to take up all the, the AI countries. Just get a more competitive AI. I'm not going to do two again because uh, we did that in the last campaign. You guys see that they just get like a ridiculous level of uh, the... Where is it here? Let me see exactly what they get. I know they get an attack. There it is. Yeah, they get that that attack and defense on core territory. Take it up by two. They get that 15%. Essentially, like every time you fight somebody, it's like they have a fort and a half, an extra fort and a half. Uh, so yeah, that's... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like the, the AI's problem isn't that their divisions uh, can't can't fight as well as yours. It's it's other problems uh, that they, they it's really just poor management of uh, movement and uh, where they place their divisions and moving them all over from front to front. So I don't feel like um, I don't feel like we'll put it on two. And the reason why I'll explain why because I think we should have a pretty challenging campaign here as we're going to be adjusting the AI behavior. And this is the reason why we're not going to play with that expert AI mod. Is because I saw that uh, it does say that it's it's balanced towards a historical uh, AI focus uh, setting. They said you can play without it, but that it won't be balanced, and that's not the way the the mod was designed. Uh, so we'll try it on the next one where I want to do historical AI focuses. Uh, we did that in God, which campaign? The China campaign? Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one we did that in. Might have been the one prior to that. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to do that again. Uh, so we'll we'll do it for that one, and we'll check out that that expert AI mod and see if it's any good. All right, so for this campaign, we're going to be controlling everything that the AI does as far as their focuses go. We're going to try and create an a, uh, interesting setup here. So we're going to be splitting up all the countries into three factions, uh, you know, democratic, communist, and fascist. Uh, I haven't said this yet, but we're going to be playing as fascists. We're going to be the fascist UK. I did a democratic United Kingdom uh, campaign a while back. I think it was last year. So we'll play as fascists this time. And uh, let's go ahead and set up these AI countries. So the United States is going to be democratic and they're going to play historical. So uh, what I'm trying to do here, and Germany is going to be democratic as well. So they're going to be allied, or hopefully anyway. What I'm trying to do here is make sure a couple things. One, that like every continent has, uh, you know, at least one country from each side uh, so that we can kind of get a good three-way war going. And two, I want like one naval power, one of the three most powerful naval powers on each side. Uh, so the the democratic countries will have the United States. Uh, obviously, the fascist countries will have us, the UK. And let's go ahead and you can't really do much with the Soviet Union, but we will set them to alternate in the hope that they will end up fighting the democracies because I want, again, a three-way conflict if we can get it. And then Japan is going to join the Comintern. So that'll be the communist naval power here. Uh, so Italy will keep them on fascist historical. Hopefully we can get an alliance with them. Uh, the French are going to be communists as well. Starting to see how this is going to shape up in Europe. Uh, the Polish are just going to go on to a historical route. Uh, and then with our, our own countries, 
We'll try and make sure a couple of them go along with us while a few others uh, decide not to. Uh, so Australia will go with us, uh, just so we have some fascist power in, in Asia. Uh, then Canada's going to go with us. That'll be our North American fascist power. And then South Africa, we're going to have them go with the, de the uh, democracies. So that'll be the democratic power in uh, Africa. And so we want them to go. We can have them go alternate for that one. Uh, since they're obviously not going to side with us. Uh, New Zealand will also have them go uh, Democratic as well. Uh, so maybe join with the United States faction uh, that should pop up with the German faction. Uh, I don't know who will form it, the Germans or the U.S. first. Probably the Germans, I would assume. Uh, so yeah, New Zealand's going to go alternate as well. Uh, India. This is one I wasn't too sure about. I think we're going to have to have them go fascist, though, because frankly, there's not going to be a lot of fascist powers in Asia. Uh, and so... I mean, because you have really, everybody in Asia, you're going to have the Soviet Union, and you're going to have the Japanese, uh, and then, yeah, I think we'll have, you know what, you know what we could do here? We could have them go with the default setting, so that you can have a democratic power in Asia. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, the Hungarians are going to go with Restore Austria-Hungary, just for shits and giggles, and because I'm trying to make it so that the four powers here, one to each side, and then just one extra one. So Romania will be the fascist one. Uh, Yugoslavia will be the communist. Yeah, they'll be the communist. And then Czechoslovakia will be the democratic. And we'll want them probably just go down to regular democratic. Yeah, uh, to remain democratic and focus predominantly on internal development. Yeah, I think that's the one we'll do. Uh, the Chinese, we're going to have them do the alternate path. Uh, and then the communist China, we'll just have them go the historical path. And... These guys, we're going to have them remain obedient to the Japanese. I, I would prefer that that's that they uh, don't cause the Japanese any problems. Uh, obviously, keep ourselves as is. Uh, the Dutch, we're going to go and have them cave to the Germans and, the, and to go fascist. Uh, obviously, you know they're not going to be too friendly with the Germans once the Germans go democratic. And then Mexico is going to be the communist power in North America. So we got the Soviet Republic here. So as you guys can see, in North America we have. Canada's as the fascist, the United States as the Democrats, and Mexico as the communist. Uh, in Africa, of course, we have, you know, the communist presence here from France. Uh, we will be, along with Italy, will be the fascist power. And the reason why we're not changing Italy or doing anything with them is really there's not much you can do with them yet until they get new focus trees, which I am hope would be in the next expansion. Uh, we'll have to see. We know France is getting a new focus tree. Uh, so... Yeah, they'll be the fascist, uh, us and, and the Italians, and then South Africa will be the democracy in Africa. Asia is a little bit more balanced towards the communists, considering the fact that you got Japan as uh, a communist here. Uh, but of course, we'll have for fascist powers, we should be able to have a presence there between our countries, uh, the Australians, and I think that's it. And maybe, maybe Siam. I don't know what will happen with them. And then for the Democrats, you have India and New Zealand. Um, and of course the Americans are going to have a big presence here more than likely fighting there. So that should uh, work out nicely. Alright, so I don't think there's anything else we need to change here. We're going to leave all the rest of this on default settings. Yes, sir. Alright, uh, so let's go ahead and... Uh, well, wait a minute, what happened there? What did I do here? Oh lord. <laughs> uh, I tried to open it again and instead I clicked the so it turned it all off. All right, well, let's go and fix that. Let's go and make sure they're all buffed up one. Oh, yeah, let's buff Japan up by that much. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. We're all buffed up by one. Uh, everything looks pretty damn good. Should end up being an interesting campaign with the three different factions fighting each other, I think. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead. And, uh, again, we're not going to play on, you know, Veteran Elite. Uh, I say this every campaign because I know people bring it up otherwise. I just feel that it just increases the speed it takes to do everything. It doesn't actually make the game more challenging, and if you really want to make it more challenging, the best way to do it is, of course, to do the major nation buffs. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, get started. Uh, so as far as the national focus tree goes, I guess we'll pick text first. Get all these selected. Go after the, the typical things here. Mechanical computing, uh, basic machine tools, you know, typical stuff. And... We'll get, we'll want these for the Spanish Civil War. I'm really hoping that we can get Spain into our faction. Uh, we'll just have to see if that ends up working out or not. Uh, this will be helpful for the Spanish Civil War, so we'll get that. 
And we need one more slot here. And I suppose we'll open up with some construction then. All right, excellent. And let's get this national focus selected. So I, I assume most of you guys are pretty familiar by now with the new uh, British uh, national focus tree. So I won't go too deep into it. I'll just, we'll just talk about it as we go. Uh, we will be reinforcing the empire though. And then of course we're gonna go with the change in course. And then go down the Organize the Black Shirts, which is the least expansive of the three. There's really not a lot to it. Uh, it does come with those decisions. Uh, but yeah, pretty much not as expansive as the left or, or right trees here. Uh, the King's Party. I know a lot of people would like me to do this, but it's been so overdone on YouTube. Like every YouTube channel has done the King's Party. Uh, it was really, really popular when Man the Guns came out. I'm glad I didn't do it. Because uh, yeah, it was just so... So popular. You know what? I said that we did the UK with the Man the Guns expansion. We did not do the UK with the Man the Guns expansion. That was actually with the Waking the Tiger expansion. Excuse me. Yeah, that was last year. Uh, so I said Man the Guns. I meant Waking the Tiger. We did the uh, British campaign with Waking the Tiger. So I've never actually played Britain uh, with the new Man the Guns expansion. Uh, so this will give us some good stuff here. Get us moving away from democracy. And now let's go and get some stuff built. We're just going to do uh, civilian factories for right now. Uh, I think that would be for the best. Just build a few civilian factories. And then with our decisions, uh, we can select something. I don't know what it is. Uh, these ones. All right, so we're just gonna say we're not interested in doing those right now. All right, good to go. Let's go ahead and get our factories set up. And probably gonna want a lot of infantry equipment. I don't know if there's anything that's not set up here. Let me just double check here. Uh, we have support equipment, light tanks. Okay, it looks like we do not have motorized right now or the anti-air going. Okay, let's go with motorized. I don't know if we're gonna use uh, anti-air in our divisions yet. I haven't decided. Can be useful to have. Uh, and let's just go and start getting some stockpiles going for this equipment that we know we're gonna need quite a bit of. Uh, so that looks pretty good for right now for a good starting uh, situation. Though, how are we doing on planes, man? I see we do. We got the interwar fighters uh, and we have close air support that could get building, so we're gonna do that. Uh, naval bombers, uh, we can get those as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say we're not interested in interwar bombers. I'm not gonna build the, the old bombs. Uh, and is there anything else, any other planes? Uh, that are leveled up. Uh, carrier naval bomber ones, we're gonna wanna get those into the list. And do we have the fighters? Uh, I assume not, cause yeah, we don't have updated fighters right now. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna wanna do is just get these guys down here at the bottom. I know they're not gonna have enough factories to, to build all this, but it's okay. Uh, I might pull from the fighters. Uh, no point on, on building old ass fighters, I feel. Now let's not build old fighters. I'd rather put them towards newer planes of other models. We we'll eventually get the fighters going. All right, get all these up here. And yeah, just don't have a factory for that right now. And that's okay. Uh, we'll deal with that later. All right, excellent. So as far as building divisions, I don't, I don't think we should build divisions uh, because uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of manpower right now. Let's just focus. And we can always use the manpower as we build up uh, our uh, equipment stockpiles. We'd always use the manpower from, from our uh, puppets if we wanted to. All right, so some of these guys still need to get trained up. So let's go ahead and do that. I assume they're all gonna eventually need to train. And let's make them peasants, green peasants. All right, excellent. Uh, so let's go and get these guys training and we'll go hop around the world and get all of our colonial troops if they need it as well. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna guess that most of them will need to be trained up. So we'll grab them up and it'd probably be better to just Ready. use, you know, <laughs> use the, uh, uh, the whatever they call this here, the army overview. Probably better to do that. We'll uh, kind of dip around. In fact, this is what we'll do. Yeah, we will do that. That would be much quicker. Uh, so we'll just have to take these guys here and put them into their own little separate army for right now so that I don't grab them in here. And yeah, we'll just take, uh, Ready, we'll just go ahead and take everybody. I'll have to do that again though. Take everybody who needs the training and isn't in an army so that I don't have to dip all over looking for these units. Eventually we're gonna to want to, to do that anyway so that we can get the move to other locations. This is fine for right now. All right, so get all those guys training up there. Give us a little bit of army experience. Now ships, uh, ships, we're gonna go ahead and take every one of our ships around the world and move them 
north of Britain so that I can arrange my own navies. I prefer to arrange the navies myself. And we're just going to move them all to Britain from all over the world, and I'll get them arranged probably in between episodes so you guys don't have to watch that. Uh, but right now, we'll probably, once they get there, we'll train them all up uh, so that we can get that naval experience. And then the Air Force is the last one. A lot of stuff we got to do here before we can unpause the game. It's just uh, when you're playing as a major power, it's just uh, typically the case. So much stuff you got to do to take care of. Uh, right now, what we're doing is we're getting all of our Air Force selected so we can just delete those planes and we'll set up our own rear wings. Now, some of those might have had experience. I didn't really check that. So maybe, I don't know if they start with experience or not. I would assume not. Yeah, it doesn't look like they do. So we might have lost some experience from that, but that's okay. All right, uh, so everything is done. So let's go ahead and speed the game up and let it play. Oh, we need fuel. All right. I didn't even check to see how our fuel situation was looking. All right, so we are going to have to trade, and we do not want to trade with the United States or the Soviet Union if we could avoid it. Uh, there's not a lot of people we can trade with, though. Uh, so we'll trade with them. Although, no, that would... You know, let's trade with the Iraqis then. So we'll give them... And for whatever reason, we're not getting the requested oil. Guessing they're trading with somebody else. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're trading with somebody else, so we weren't able to get all that. And uh, we can also trade with some countries that we're gonna we're gonna have to trade with the Americans. Oh, there's no way around it, I don't think. Uh, we could trade with Venezuela. Maybe we'll get them into the faction. Just trying to build up a little bit of a fuel reserve uh, because obviously these. These ships are going to, you know, soak it up as they move from their locations all around the world, but eventually it's going to get better. Uh, and we have dockyards, free dockyards. I didn't even take a look at what the Navy was doing. Probably doing a lot of worthless shit. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're building just a ton. I hate the way the game starts out with the... I know it's supposed to be, like, authentic, uh, but yeah, I just don't uh, like the way it starts out like this. We're going to go ahead and increase uh, the amount of dockyards that we have going towards uh, repairs. I'm going to get a convoy line going down here as well. And let's take a look at what they got going. What are they wasting our production on? So we're getting some, all right, we're getting some 1936 cruiser holes. We're going to delete any ones that are barely done. Because, uh, yeah, I just don't like the way they have this set up. We don't even know if these are good ships or not. Uh, good designs, they're probably not. Looks like uh, that's going to be it. We do have the carrier here, uh, but it's... Yeah, I don't know if we want to keep that one going, the 1936 carrier. I suppose we will, uh, because I don't know how much production that represents, but I assume it's a lot. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these assigned so that they just slowly get all these done. And we only want to build one more of all these. And just uh, get it so that as they finish up, the dockyards will already assign themselves, so I don't have to worry about it. I'll just kind of go down the line and get them completed. And maybe we want to work on this carrier first, in fact. Yeah, I probably should work on that. Uh, get that done. All right, excellent. So, good to go. I don't know if we have any other... Oh, no, King George died. I don't know if we have any other ships that are still moving. Uh, we should have almost all of our ships here already, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And let's go ahead and merge them all together and see what we got. We got 237 ships here. These are uh, two ships that just were completed, so it'll be 239. And it does look like that is all the ships around the world. Excellent. All right, so uh, get those merged, and then let's go in and take care of uh, our situation here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set them to uh, go ahead and, and uh, split off as they get damaged, because we're just gonna set them all to train up. I know this is gonna cost us an insane amount of oil, but we will stop the large ships from training once they get past level two. Uh, and that's the way we'll do it. All right, so let's go ahead and get these guys exercising. And once, as again, once they get the, the experience for the larger ships, we'll pull them off. And we'll have them sit in port until I'm able to set them up. And we have no fuel from that. Oh, that's that's expected. Uh, definitely expected. Uh, that would exhaust our, our fuel supplies. We're going to have to trade with the Americans at least a little bit. How many factories do we have before I go about doing this? All right, we're doing we're doing all right. We could trade five more uh, for right now, just to the Americans, just to have some fuel. I don't. I'm pretty sure they can't train without fuel. So, yeah, they might be. I don't know. Looks like they're still training, even though we have zero fuel. Maybe the fuel is going straight to them. All right, so we got the change in course. Uh, excellent. I guess that was a quick one. I didn't realize that. Uh, it's a quicker focus. 
And let's go with the organized the black shirts. I just want to go ahead and move straight towards fascism so that, you know, the fascist countries around the world will, will look at us as an ally. Uh, I think that'd be smart to get it done quickly. All right, so yeah, we'll just get our, our ships trained, get our troops trained, and then we'll, after that, we'll concern ourselves about moving, uh, grow rubber plantations in Nigeria, demand reduced uh, Dutch trade with Germany. Uh, so we could do this one uh, for a little bit of our uh, political power, but we're not going to right now. We're not going to focus on that. And so let's just say we're not interested in seeing that. And then we can grow rubber plantations in Nigeria. Okay, uh, that does seem pretty useful uh, to have some, some rubber down there, but we won't do that right now. Again, let's uh, focus. Focus our political power on getting a few things first. There's a couple things I th feel like we need to get kind of early here before we go doing that. All right, so we do have these guys done, so let's go ahead and take them out. And we'll just put them into, oh Lord. Uh, you know what? We'll just put them into this army for right now. You know what? I'll unsign them so that way I can use the little button up here to, to find all the units. Italy has defeated Ethiopia. They're getting better and better at that. I'm proud of them. Uh, these guys can get pulled out as well. And Germany is embroiled in the Civil War, so that happened fairly quick. Yeah. Uh, so here's their Civil War. And hopefully um, the uh, German... Reich under Adolf Hitler will will get defeated. So Japan and Man ends their naval treaty. All right, so we should review our policy as well then. And we just got to keep our eyes on all these training uh, units here. Because again, I don't want to train units needlessly. We will not uh, train. Oops, my bad. Uh, we will not trade the planes just yet. And that's because we have no fuel. All right, so these guys are done training. This is going to save us a lot of fuel. Uh, well, now that these guys are trained up, all of our all of our capital ships, you know, the, the stuff that really just soaks up the uh, the fuel whenever they got to do anything. Uh, so we'll just take them all out. You know what I should have did? <laughs> I should have did it this way. Oh, oh well, this is not working. I thought you could click up here to get them all selected. Apparently not. All right, so yeah, we want to select all the large ships, and there are a lot of them, guys. You know what? We'll just do it that way. And I think they're all selected. All right. Uh, and then we'll just pull these guys out and get them to stop training. And move them over here. Or right there. That's fine. Oh, and not that one. My bad. Alright, excellent. So got them all pulled out. It looks like I pulled out one that didn't need to. We can fix that. Easy enough. Alright, excellent. So we'll train the uh, the other ships. Uh, the destroyers. Maybe not the cruisers. We'll keep the destroyers training again for the uh, Navy experience. All right, so that is improving the situation a lot. And you know what? We should probably set up all those the ships to go into this fleet automatically. Uh, but we're not going to do that because there's so many lines. Let's get these completed. And yeah, we're doing pretty good getting the, this uh, done. Uh, you can see the carrier's got all five of their dockyards assigned. And um, then also we have a decision available. We have a few decisions available. Okay. Uh, improve worker conditions. Give refuge to German scientists and Italian scientists. I don't know what this gets removed. Is it... Uh, Democracy? I want to say it doesn't. I think we did it. We did it as a... Uh, I mean, I think it gets removed if you're not a democracy. Uh, but you know what? We did that as Communist USA, and I think we got to keep it. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say let's do it. And then hopefully instantly removed if one of the following is true. Okay, wait a minute. So this would be removed uh, when they go democratic. So we don't want to do that one. And this is only removed if Italy goes democratic. So I think we should be able to keep the Italian scientist one. So we'll do that. Uh, I think it's worth it for the research bonus. Even though I was going to do something else with the political power. It's okay. All right. Uh, so we got the organized black shirts completed. Excellent. So that gives us those decisions and 200 political power. Uh, we cannot do the British path to fascism because we got to be fascist already. So that lets us go in and start moving down uh, some of the other trees, uh, including reinforcing the empire to get our... Uh, get our stability up, but I think we should go for the civilian factories given by a limited rearmament first. So go for that. Let's take a look. Uh, what we want to get here? Well, we already know what we want to get. We want to get the silent workhorse to get, of course, get the uh, get all the rest of the stuff filled out. Still have 105 political power. Does give us the ability to take a look at some of these other decisions, which we don't want to do any of those. Where's the black shirts one? So there's the withdrawal from the Naval Conference, uh, which we can't do because we don't have the political power right now. The Escalator Clause has been invoked, though. All right, where are the, the black shirt ones? 
Apparently I passed right by them. Or they're up here at the top or something? Oh, here we go. These are the decisions right now. So we can select where our black shirt marches are. Uh, and then you do it through here. I haven't done any of this. Obviously I haven't played as a UK since all this stuff was added. Uh, and then we have the ability to urge restraint. Uh, greatly reduces the chances of violent march. Okay. And then we have the hold anti-German war speech that we can do as well. Uh, which we're not going to do. It does increase weakly stability though, so there's so there's that, so that helps. I mean, basically you have to keep stability above 50% it seems. I don't know if that's only if you take this. Uh, it is imperative that our next march goes off without a hitch, lest the violent response to it spills over to the rest of the country and ignites nationwide unrest, and potentially even civil war. Though it may turn away some of our most hardline supporters, we must instruct our supporters to refrain from violence at all costs. Uh, okay, so probably not going to do that right now then. Uh, we're not going to do... I could do any one of these because it does increase your fascist support here. And I think that's the only way to increase it. I don't think we get any other bonus. We're only watching democracy drop. Uh, but I don't think we have any other bonuses to fascism right now. So the only way to, to get it is through these black shirt march decisions here. And they do t cost a little bit of political power here. I, I guess it depends on... Yeah, it seems it does depend on the press of infrastructure or how many slots and building slots it has. I'm not entirely sure what it's what it's based on. Uh, perhaps, you know what, it's probably victory points. Yeah, maybe victory points. But 173 political power to march in London. London, excuse me, that's, that's quite a bit. So we will march in East Anglia then, I think. Yeah, we'll start there. That's where we'll start. Sure, why not? And let's see what that does. Black shirts organize in the United Kingdom. Under the leadership of Oswald Mosley, the British Union of Fascists has begun an organized campaign of marches across the country, thus seeking to grow the number of fascist supporters throughout the United Kingdom. The violent counter-reaction by anti-fascist elements of the public have already caused a number of street fights, however, and it is uncertain whether stability will be maintained or whether the political unrest will become even worse. The BUF leadership, for their part, have already vowed not to stop until they march on Downing Street and demanded a change of government. We'll emerge from the crucible stronger than ever. All right, and what's this? Violent march in East Anglia. Okay, so it's just saying that it will be a violent march because we didn't argue for non-violent marches. Okay, uh, and it's it's already happened. Uh, the march in, I'm over here looking at this shit while the event's right here. Uh, the march in East Anglia resulted in a huge counter-protest and extensive street fighting. Despite large numbers of wounded and even some deaths, our black shirts managed to hold their own against the trouble shooters until the police intervened. All right, so that does decrease stability by a lot, and uh, we gained a little bit of fascist support. Uh, currently, we're sitting at 6%. Uh, so when we refresh that, we'll be at 9% now. Okay, and uh, stability has gotten even lower. All right, so we might want to hold those German anti-German speeches for the weekly support. Uh, it seems that that also results in stability drop below 50% during Black uh, Civil War will start. So, yeah, we probably want to do that to make sure that we don't have any problems here. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And... We won't read all that one. All right, let's see if there's any uh, troops done training. There are. There's a ton of troops that are, are done training. Uh, so let's get them selected. In fact, let's... Yeah, let's do it this way. Seems that more are done training than not. All right, and then we'll just get them placed out of here for right now. All right, uh, so we got a few divisions left to train. Let's take a look at our ships, make sure we, again, we don't have any large ships that are training needlessly. Costing us in fuel, which we don't really have yet. Looks like that's, that's all we got. Alright, so I don't know how well their training is going with the lack of fuel. And we did get that completed. Excellent. So that'll be helpful in the Civil War whenever that starts. The Spanish Civil War, and we might even have our own damn Civil War. I don't know. Um, probably should get field hospitals relatively early. I don't really have any army experience to to make any adjustments, though. Uh, could continue working on or, or get the Navy stuff uh, so that we can design our ships and have make sure they have the most up-to-date stuff. That would be wise. It's imperative that we win the naval conflict. I'd also go in and get the Hurricanes, which would be wise, too. 
I would love to get the uh, to get the little. Let me just see if I can even get that. Uh, I would probably go with this one for design companies, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we'd want the the one for our fighters. So we try and get air superiority. So we could get that any time. We just need the 150 political power. I'm really tempted to do it, so we'll have it for the 1936 fighters. You know what? We are going to do that. We'll wait to get the 1936 fighters uh, to make sure that we can get the, the, you know, make them as good as possible. All right, so we are going to go with, we're going to go with concentrated industry. I don't think we'll have too much bombing. I hope we can at least control the skies over our own, own country. All right, so we'll get the, that going there. Uh, making our fuel refining would probably be a good idea, considering how how expensive it is to run our fleet, and then of course our, our air force is going to be really bad too. Uh, so I'm really tempted to go for that. However, I think we should probably uh, go ahead and get ourselves. Yeah, we should probably get get naval techs. If we don't start working on them now. We're going to fall behind on the naval arms race, which is definitely something I don't want. So we'll start by getting. See, we can get the depth charge thrower in 80 days or the active sonar in 75 days. Uh, we don't have the new battleships yet, uh, so we should probably get those. Uh, it's 112 days. Uh, let's get everything that we'd place in those battleships, I suppose. Now, we actually have everything we'd want to put in our battleships as far as equipment goes, so we just need to get the tech. Uh, so that's what we'll go for, 112 days. All right, excellent. And yeah, we could, again, urge restraint here. And it probably reduces the amount of stability that you lose. Uh, Second London Naval Treaty has been signed, and we were one of the signees of that. And yeah, we're going to want to make sure that we set all of our, our troops up uh, around the world for places that we actually want to defend. I want to get them all trained up first, though. We'll focus on doing the training, and then we'll mess with the divisions here. Uh, let's first get them all trained up, and then I'll, I'll figure out where I want to where I want to defend, where we want to assign them. It's going to be really difficult to control Asia. And how are we doing on equipment? We are doing terrible on equipment. Okay, good to know. We could also train up some planes, but I think I mentioned this, but the fuel is gonna be a problem. But yeah, I think we're gonna have some difficulty uh, holding here uh, because of the Japanese, and then the, the French would not be on our side. I don't think they play that much of a role in China, but neither would uh, India. Or did we put India to be on our side? We might've put India. No, 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 they're democracy. That's right, so they will not be on our side. Uh, but you get construction one. Let's go and get excavation. So yeah, it's a really hard to say if we'll be able to do well in Asia. Couldn't tell you. Uh, these guys here are in Edward VII abdication crisis. Oh no, he will not change his mind. So he abdicated and that gained us some stability. So that'd be helpful uh, for us. I want to get the political power for the uh, planes, the aircraft designer. So we're going to get that first before we do anything else with that political power. Uh, again, though, we I know we do need to start getting the fascist support ticked up, but we are getting that because of the uh, reduction of democracy. So therefore it goes to both communist and fascist. Uh, so we're only at 12% for fascist with 7% uh, for communist. Uh, but yeah, taking a look at these two, uh, it's, it does look like they're, they're winning. Yeah, I think Hitler's losing right now. And he did abdicate, okay. And that's gonna get us a ton of more stability. Excellent. Uh, and I, I think we'll just say we're not interested in being notified of these right now, except for except for the ones related to the Black March. Yeah. Just for right now, again, we gotta get that political power doing, doing something. Uh, let's go and pull these guys out. Looks like we're almost done training all those troops up. We need to get the limited rearming it as well. And again, we can't go down this route until we're actually fascist. So we won't be able to get that yet. And having trouble dragging this today. Could go and do the Reinforce the Empire uh, for more stability. Um, it might be something that we'll go for as stability gets ticked down further and further. Uh, could go with the uh, air defense and then the radar, and of course then that leads us to the Tizard mission. I really want to beeline towards the extra research slot though, so let's go and start working on that with the Shadow Scheme. Uh, grants four building slots and four military factories in total in two states when entering a war. And then it gets us the wartime industry as well, which we don't really care about, but I don't really com you know, convert many of my factories, if any, uh, over. Apparently we can get a political advisor, cheap political advisor here. He's 135. Oh, okay, Stanley Baldwin. Oh, and the war industrialist is only 135 too. Oh, okay, all right, so there's some uh, cheaper, oh, they're all 135. All right, I, want, I guess we have uh, something reducing the cost here. 
for these guys so they're not 150. All right, well, again, I want to use it for the aircraft designer. So that's what we'll do. Let's go pull these guys out. And Civil War should be starting soon. It sometimes doesn't start until 1937 when you'd expect, but I don't know. It seems like it's been starting late 1936 on a lot of the campaigns we've been playing. Uh, we did get mechanical computing, and that means we are done here. Uh, so, yeah, we're done here as well. Excellent. Uh, so that'll just allow us kind of focus on getting stuff that'll actually help us in, you know, either the Spanish Civil War or, again, our own Civil War, which is a real possibility. We do need to get field hospitals. Uh, the artillery, I haven't even taken a look at our division designs. I assume they're cruddy as usual. And we already have one going towards uh, ships here. Uh, so, you know what? We should really focus on ships. Yes, we should. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Let me take that back. Uh, I realized that we now have the ability to, if I can just click on the right button, uh, go ahead and get the aircraft designers, uh, and then that'll allow us to research uh, the fighters. All right, that'll work out nicely. 129 days, and of course they will now have uh, plus 10% agility and, and max speed. Okay. And we can now do another black shirt march if we wanted to, and I feel like stability's high enough, so might as well, though. I'd prefer to do it, you know, we'll have to wait. I'd prefer to do it like right here, try and keep them like close rather than just doing it all in random places. I don't know if that affects when you go to into the Civil War, if that affects who, you know, which states are on your side, I assume it would. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll put these guys over here and then we're gonna try and help the Nationalists, of course. Uh, so let's take a look, although we might not be able to because yeah, we're still Democratic, so we're not gonna be able to help them. Damn, that's a, that's a bummer. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till we go fascist. So we really need to to get that done. Uh, I didn't I didn't even think about that fact. All I was thinking about was uh, helping them out, man. All right, so let's pull these guys out here. Again, we'll uh, arrange the colonial troops a little bit later. I kind of just want to get to through. My goal for the can for the uh, episode is to get through 1936 and and get into 1937. So do need to keep it playing. So I'll move these guys into the fleet and see if we have no no large ships yet. They can pull out, but almost. Several of these are almost done. And that should save, there we go. And that should save a lot of our fuel. You know what? All right, so let's do this the way I should have did it before. Uh, just create a new fleet. And, oops, I didn't want to do it that way. Um, <laughs> create a new fleet with all carriers. And then, oh yeah, uh, we should probably pull out the bad ships as well. So let's go and pull out all the battleships and all the heavy cruisers and then we'll take a look and see how these look because i don't know if they're all trained fully trained it looks like one of them's not so i have to place him back in there but i believe the rest of these are all right excellent so they'll go over there and i think that's like the majority of the heavy ships yeah that's all the heavy ships now uh so let's go and place them in here and yeah we're in a good position now uh and it looks like we finished up a lot of our a lot of the ships that were training up. Okay, uh, so yeah, just light cruisers and, and destroyers currently training. We might need to stop the light cruisers from training for the naval experience and only use destroyers. And just take all the light cruisers, or destroyers and submarines. Uh, we'll take a look and see how the fuel looks, but that's probably going to be what we have to do. Because uh, yeah, the fuel's still in a crampy situation. Uh, so we got the carriers. Uh, they'll be done in July 1937. Uh, we have these cruisers here still building as well. So let's get them completed. And then once these are done, we'll we'll build our own ships, our own designs. Okay. Yes, uh, still a couple of divisions left training. And yeah, fuel is still just in a terrible spot. Uh, though it looks like it's starting to get better. And we did finish up the battleship as well. So we'll better get that, that building soon uh, once we finish up on those cruisers. In fact, we might go ahead and build that out now. I'd like to do a little bit of ship design in this episode. Sure, why not? Uh, so let's go ahead and work on getting the sonar and the depth charges done. We'll also want to get the improved airplane catapult as well. Uh, let's do the depth charge thrower first, though. Use that experience there. I don't know if that's going to affect our ability to build the battleships. I suppose we'll find out, huh? Uh, so we have... Oh, yes, that's right. We are extremely limited uh, because of the... Hmm... Yeah, we could make crampier battleships or just wait to make them. Because, yeah, I mean, you just can't do a whole lot. I mean, you see that, like, look at the production costs here. And this is not even great. I mean, we barely have anything here. I have the most basic stuff here, and it's only going to get worse. 
So yeah, we'd have to make pretty cruddy battleships to be able to stay into the naval treaty. Uh, so you know what? We will not build the battleships just yet. Let's get out of that naval treaty first. We'll just build smaller ships for right now. Get those ones completed and then I'll take a look and see what we want to get next. All right, so yeah, some ships are training here, so I don't know. I, I do think we're gonna have to pull the light cruisers out. I don't see there any, any way around that, guys. We're just not gonna have the fuel to keep them going. Uh, so we got the shadow scheme. Uh, so let's get industrial effort, two times research bonuses for the industrial techs. And let's go ahead and pull those out now, guys. This is, uh, this is just, we have no fuel and we're trading for so much. So let's go ahead and pull, do I just wanna pull all the light cruisers? You know what, that's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and pull uh, all the light cruisers out and we just need to make sure we don't have anybody selected. Let's pull all light cruisers out and then we can always take the ones that still need training and put them back. I think that'd be the quicker way to do this. Yeah, I mean, there's only three. Put them back into there. And then the rest of these guys can now join this fleet. And there we go, excellent. Uh, so that should save us a lot on fuel. Yeah, those light cruisers are soaking it up too. Not as bad as the uh, capital ships, but still pretty bad overall. Uh, so we do have uh, more dockyards completed, excellent. Uh, so let's go and place uh, all these into there, and then we're gonna wanna go ahead and start getting ourselves some convoys built as well. Uh, doing pretty good on uh, resources, no problems up here yet. Uh, as far as our equipment right now, yeah, just mainly infantry equipment that we currently need. We have five factories going towards that. I guess we could pull from the infantry, the support equipment, excuse me, so we can get some carrier and naval bombers going and a bit more towards infantry equipment. Uh, don't need any resources, good to go. And all these guys are done training, so let's go and pull them out. All right, fantastic. Okay, so let's take a look at what got done here. Light cruiser, place them in there. And we do have another light cruiser that has finished. All right, excellent. So still not great in fuel right now. I'm having to send so many factories off for that. Uh, and we can change up here. I completely forgot that we were saving up for this. So let's go ahead and, and start completing some of these. I I'm, wanna go ahead and just wait for London, I suppose. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, oh, look at this. This actually shows you how much stability you're gonna lose for each one. So if you do a peaceful march, uh, then you still lose 33% stability. That's massive, uh, but you get 22% uh, fascist support. Okay, uh, a 50% chance of getting march in greater London area. Okay, so that would be even more costly. And then you have the, the violent march, which would result in a civil war, no doubt. Frankly, almost everything would result in a civil war with the exception of the peaceful march. So we should probably pledge a peaceful march if I want to get London, because uh, getting London would be enough to, to tick us pretty close to getting getting completely fascist, enough to, so that we can we can uh, do something about it. Uh, we could, of course, have gotten the advisor here, but I really didn't want to waste the political power to get the advisor if I could avoid it on, uh, you know, the, where is he at, the fascist guy. I uh, know he's in here somewhere. Fascist demagogue, here we go. Uh, so we could have gotten that. Oh, wait a minute, you can't. Current ruling party is fat. That's interesting. You can't get it unless you are fascist. All right. Okay then. Well, uh, I think that's to make it so you have to use the the black shirt raids. I would assume. So what we're gonna want to do is pledge a peaceful march. Uh, if we can do that, uh, urge restraint here. And we'll lose a little bit of fascist support, but in the long run, it, it should be for the best. I think. So let's go ahead and pledge that, and then uh, we're gonna have to wait until we're able to do. Uh, the black shirt march here in London, uh, which would be 173 uh, political power. That's what we're going to need. If we look at the percentages, have those changed? Oops, so you do have to have that open, by the way. Uh, so they haven't changed yet. Interesting. Hmm. I don't think they have. So 33%, I think that's what it was before. Maybe it hasn't taken effect. It's not considered yet. I don't know. Uh, concentrated industry is completed. And that means we're done with the 1936. Uh, Industrial techs. You're already getting those fighters going. And let's go ahead and work on more uh, ship techs. Uh, let's go ahead and get the sonar. Try and get up to date on our ship techs. Since the Navy is key, primal, for the uh, British to succeed. 
So yeah, I'm pretty worried. I know that the Italians are helping the Nationalists out. The Nationalists typically win anyways, uh, but the Germans will not be helping them. Um, that, that helps them quite a bit. And of course, the Soviets will be helping the Republicans. So, And Otto assumes the Hungarian crown. So remember, these two should unite, should have an Austria, uh, Hungary here. And we did get quite a few new factories and uh, also have military factories completed as well. All right, so let's go to all these, get all these assigned here. And we're still researching the fighters, so we can't get those out here just yet. Uh, we should probably just build infantry equipment, uh, since that's what we're really short on right now. Yeah, we're pretty short on infantry equipment at the moment, uh, so it seems like would be the best thing for us to do. We don't have the army experience to, to do anything, uh, unfortunately, with division designs. As far as civilian factories go, uh, we currently have... We're doing all right on uh, civilian factories, but we're going to go ahead and build some more, since the military factories... They're cheaper to build a few if you wait a little bit until you get a few things changed. So let's do civilian factories so we can build quicker. I think that would be behoove us. All right, let's go with the 80% here. And so we'll do the 70 there. And we'll we'll do one more into Britain. I don't, or to London, excuse me. I don't want to spend, I want to put military factories there. Uh, so yeah, this looks good. Let's get some more civilian factories. And eventually we are going to have to get some dockyards and some military, military factories going. Uh, we'll pro prioritize those civilian factories though get a few more and we are having to trade for so much fuel in fact I think we should trade for more fuel I don't think we're trading for enough right now honestly let's in fact trade for like everything that they have and then just reduce the amount that we're trading with the United States probably by a lot let's take a look and see how it looks now uh, we do need to get something else here we have excavation too so that'll improve the oil situation as well and I want to say that we're done here for right now uh, we want to get fuel refining once the time comes uh, but yeah, we're done there uh, obviously got two going towards uh, the the ships so we won't do naval doctrines just yet uh, and I think we should go in and get some stuff for our, our troops uh, so I do want to get the field hospitals, pretty important for Britain. Uh, but let's start out by getting the interwar artillery. We do need to get anti-tanks. I assume we're going to have to put those into our division designs. And we can do this. I keep missing it. Uh, so let me take a look. It's still a really high ch Hmm. It's still 31%, only 31% chance of a peaceful march. It seems like that didn't change at all, even though I urged restraint here. Yeah, it's not, a, not great odds there. We could end up having civil war here guys and there's not really any way to avoid it if you go with london perhaps i should not go with london it's just too bad of a, a chance there yeah you know what we won't we'll go here do the march there i wouldn't have done the urge restraint and we did get the peaceful march okay and that uh gave us some uh, political power too interesting uh but not much fascist support there uh yeah didn't get much fascist support but you did get more uh political power so that's interesting does that change this at all the odds here so it looks like it did affect it uh, where you got the peaceful march because uh, we're at 25% hmm and it does seem like it affected it some all right I don't know if like your total stability affects it or if it was just because I urged the peaceful march but I thought it said 30 something before uh, so we won't do London it's kind of a bummer that we have to do these other uh, areas here but London just seems too expensive uh, as far as like the stability that you lose and you lose a lot of stability for doing it there uh, so let's do it do it here. And I am avoiding, intentionally avoiding, saying much of these these uh, British, uh, the, the names here of the cities and states in, in Britain, because in my last British series, I, I discovered, because I went into it going like, oh, I always have trouble with pronunciation uh, because I'm terrible even with English, let alone other languages. And so I, I went into the British series like, oh, everything's going to be in English. It's going to be great. I, I won't mispronounce things. Nope. That was the, the, out of all my series, it was the one I got the most, like, corrections on me mispronouncing things, because, uh, you guys over there in Britain, you pronounce everything a lot different than us. Uh, we, we make it simpler, uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, we, we make words simpler, like, for, for the word color, for instance. I look at color in, in, in British English, I see color. Uh, so we just, we just make things more easier, for the most part. Lazier, uh, I guess you could say. Uh, so we did the March in Sussex. And none can stand in the way of progress. Did lose stability and gained some fascist support. And we're now at 30%, but still not there yet, guys. Uh, so we're going to want to go ahead and do a another march. We only have 68% stability left. So we do need to take that into consideration. 
on uh, if we got like a violent march, how bad would that reduce it? Uh, so we're looking at really bad there. Uh, here we can phase that though. So I suppose we'll go ahead and do the 39 political power. I'm really trying to get to fascism as quick as we can, guys. And again, we could do the urge restraint as well. And it seems like you get political power for doing that, so maybe we'll do that on the next one. You did get the depth charge thrower, excellent. And let's go with the improved airplane catapult. And peaceful march, excellent. Uh, so yeah, peaceful marches do seem to be uh, beneficial in the fact you get that political power. You just don't get as much fascist support. Uh, just nowhere near the amount of fascist support. So let's go ahead and complete it, or see if we can complete another one. Uh, we could do this one, and again, yeah, I just don't, I don't think we should do ones that are that, that costly in stability. I know it ticks the fascism up quicker, uh, but you know what, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do the urge, because if it, it works, then you get that political power back. Uh, so that should make it more likely. It's slightly more likely. It's not that much more likely, though. But you have a very low chance of getting the violent ones. So I guess there's that. Uh, so these are that's an option right there. Maybe we'll want to do this one, though. 15%? No, we don't want to do 15%. All right, so we'll do this one. There we go. A little bit more fascist support. Not much, though. Uh, so we're looking at 36% is where we're sitting right now. Uh, do we want to do any further ones? I mean, we need to get some stability up here, guys. Uh, stability is in a bad spot. So I guess we're gonna have to do another uh, anti-German speech to get that stability back up. Talk, talk crap about the Germans. And we got the industrial effort uh, completed. Let's get that extra research slot. It's gonna be super helpful to have. And we have spare dockyards. Uh, so now we're only working on the carrier. Uh, so we're still working on getting a couple techs for the light cruisers and destroyers. So I will not build those yet. Uh, we'll just put them into, put all our dockyards into convoys because we need convoys anyway, guys. Uh, we're gonna want a lot of convoys. So we'll build up the convoys while we wait to get those last couple of techs. There's really not much here. Uh, the sonar and the, the catapult, which we can do the destroyers without the catapults. Uh, so we will. Let's take a look at our ships. I really do need to set these guys up to, we'll, we'll make sure that they're set up to go into here as well. Uh, once they're done training, or excuse me, once they're done uh, building. Yeah, we'll just do the destroyers and the submarines to keep our uh, naval experience going up. All right, excellent. So the goal is an hour long episode here. And as I said, I did want to get through 1937, which it doesn't look like we will get through. Uh, we need to make sure we build those and we need to get the sea gladiators. So let's get those uh, going. All right, so before I forget, we will build the fighters. Uh, we do not have the air experience to do anything with that design just yet. And how are we doing on... We could pull from... We're going to need a lot of artillery and support equipment, though, so I don't really want to pull from those if I can avoid it. We'll just pull from the infantry equipment to get one factory going towards the fighters for right now. Uh, and... Okay, we can do some black strip marches up here. We need to get that stability up a little bit higher, though. I imagine that even these would be... Oh, well, they're not that risky, actually. Yeah, they're not really too, too risky at all, in fact. All right, yeah, not bad. Uh, so, you know, I, I suppose we will go for this one. Because even at the worst, it doesn't tick it down too, too low. How are we looking? We're at 37%. All right, and it was a peaceful march as well, even though we didn't do the peaceful march. Okay, that's nice, but of course, we don't get much fascist support there for that. Uh, so we're now only at 39%. Uh, let's go ahead and try and complete a, another one, see if we have any... Any ones that have uh, not too costly. Uh, 9.6 at the worst, so we don't want to go for that. That's 8.10. Uh, could go for this one. Uh, it just doesn't change it much. So we're going to go for one of these ones, but let's wait until we get the stability up a little bit higher. I just we got to keep it above 50%, guys. It's kind of like a game, and we've got to uh, we got to keep it from dropping too low. And there we go. So that does seem that the Nazis did lose. That's excellent. Happy to see. And so that means that uh, they'll be starting to move towards a democracy soon. So that's very good news. Uh, it does seem civil war is going as you'd expect for the most part. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's that's good. I, I was a little bit worried about it uh, with us not being able to assist there. Uh, we can dip around the world, see what everybody's working on. And the German civil war ends. See uh, war plans, divisions. Just make sure everybody's going where we want them to go. Um, I assume they would. Got the Great Purge happening there. Strengthening the Polish state. 
And... Alright, New Zealand Steel. Is there anybody I didn't look at that has I'm an effort and it has the their own focus trees? Just sweep through, sweep through here and take a look at everybody. Trust in the West. Probably shouldn't do that, Czechoslovakia. So uh, we got the active sonar completed, and so we can go ahead and design the destroyers out. Awesome. I wanted to make sure we were able to design something. Oh damn, I forgot the torpedoes. You need those for the destroyers. Ah shit. Now you can't always just design it and then add it to it uh, a little bit later. Uh, so I suppose that's an option. When do we when do we get this? It's gonna be 73 days. That's quite a while to be waiting to get the destroyers. So we will go ahead and design them, and we'll just have them build like a couple, uh, so that we can make sure that one, I can get some ship designing into the episode, and two, so we get them building. Uh, so we're gonna want to make our own versions here, but we'll go ahead and modify this one, I suppose. It's probably the cheapest way to do this. Historical destroyers, and let's go. We, eventually, we're gonna want to create many different variants, uh, but for, we're gonna start out with a sub hunter one uh, because obviously that's what we're gonna need these guys for the most uh, and we will not use the fire control system we will use sonar here and that does mean we'll be able to use that there we can remove it because I'm gonna put a radar there and uh, torpedo launcher ones that's all we have light engines there and then we're gonna want uh, to get ourselves the best depth charges here that we have so they're just both going to be focused in on depth charges, guys. Uh, I want these to be our sub-hunter destroyers. So those that are not familiar uh, with the way I do my, my ship designs, uh, so the, the larger ships, the capital ships, the carriers, the battleships, uh, they will have uh, unique names that you guys can suggest. Uh, but for the destroyers, the light cruisers, I guess it's not so much the submarines, but definitely the destroyers and light cruisers, ones that I'm going to have like multiple models of. I, I like to be able to easily just look at them and see what, what their job is. So uh, these are going to be sub hunters. That's what we'll name them. And then I name all the ships, you know, based off of, you know, their model. So this is the second model here, 1936, and A would be that it's the first variant of it. Just so you guys know how I name these. And we're going to do crabs like uh, like that for my sub hunters. It's like they're grabbing with their little crabby hands and grabbing the uh, submarines. <laughs> I know that makes no sense because it's like if they're uh, underneath the submarines rather than above, but don't think too hard about it, guys. All right, so 19 experience, and uh, we can go in and get the, the new sub hunters built. Get them out there. And, I mean, destroyers are so quick to build, and we don't know how long it's going to take to get that, that when well, we know it's going to be 70 something days. Uh, so we'll just build, we'll build two, and we're going to want to pull all of those. And that'll get us on the 21st of January. So, yeah, we'll want at least two, but let's go for three for right now. And that should be good to go. Uh, we're at 60% stability. So let's take a look, see if we want to go ahead and uh, knock out one of these. We might want to wait. Again, uh, I just don't want any problems here. Uh, we could suppose we could go for that one. I guess we'll go ahead and do Northern Ireland. Why not? Okay, uh, so we'll see how that goes, and it's a violent one. All right, so it's good that I went for a, uh, one that wouldn't reduce this below 50%. So now at 39% fascist, that is it's taking quite a while to get that completed. Uh, but yeah, the whole anti-German speeches, it seems to be the way to, to tick it up and keep it so that you don't fall below it. Uh, leadership purges in the Soviet Union. Okay, so let's keep our eye on these ships because I want to say, yeah, we did have light cruisers that could get pulled out. That should save us some more uh, fuel, a little bit anyways, so that uh, we don't need as much. It does suck that we have to trade for so much, guys. That's unfortunate, but uh, we got the imp uh, airplane catapults. So I believe we can go in and start getting our first light cruiser model done as well. Yes, sir. Uh, so we're going to want to get submarines next, I think. Yeah. Let's get the submarines now. And we're going for equipment first so that we can get them building. Then we'll go for like the, the passive bonuses that apply uh, to them regardless. All right, so I guess we'll get to do a little bit more ship designing here. Oh, oops, wrong button. Uh, so we want to get the light cruisers built. And let's just uh, create a variant of this one, I think. I don't know what the difference between these are. It looks like this one's a little bit, yeah, a little bit more filled out. So we're going to get them... Uh, Starting to build here, we're gonna want. Oh yeah, we don't want heavy cruisers. Uh, we want light cruiser batteries. So we're gonna want a light cruiser that is designed around taking out light ships. So an attack cruiser. Uh, so we'll have an attack cruiser, 
And then we're also gonna want a support cruiser as well that's gonna be heavily based on anti-air, uh, but that won't be this one. Uh, we'll get that one a little bit later. Uh, and I don't know if we're gonna want to use this or not. Let's see if it's worth it once we've added all this stuff in. Yeah, we'll have to see if we want that or not. Uh, we will give them sonar though. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll give them sonar. Though, yeah, we'll give them sonar, it's fine. All right, so cruiser engine two. Eventually we're gonna remove that though, when likely. Got the secondary battery two, got the cruiser armor, excellent. All right guys, so this is how it's looking. I want a high light attack, so we are gonna have two guns up here at the top. And then we're also gonna give them those uh, catapults that we, that we just got uh, to give them a bit of surface defection. Uh, and we're gonna give them torpedoes too, so that they will have a torpedo attack. Uh, so there, there are attack submarines, or excuse me, attack cruisers. And as such, because we don't even have a way to attack submarines, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sonar just to make them cheaper to produce here. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the fire control system and see if this is gonna be worth it what we're getting because it does reduce reliability uh, by a bit let's take a look I mean it, it'll increase the attack by one uh, anti-air doesn't go up by much this is okay guys um I don't like the anti-air where the anti-air is at but I'd rather have yeah uh, I'd rather have the uh, torpedoes right now on these guys than anti-air at the moment so so it's okay we have carriers we have a carrier fleet uh, eventually we're going to take that anti-air uh, attack up a lot higher. Uh, so for right now, this will work and I'm going to make them, give them that icon and go and save this, but it's, it's not great. It's not a great design. It's okay, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll fix it later. We'll add some stuff to them, make them a little bit better. All right. So we're going to want to go ahead and pull from a lot, a lot of this here and just kind of focus on getting like, uh, the cruisers completed. All right, excellent. So that looks pretty good. Uh, and do we want to do any of these decisions? Probably not. We don't really have high stability right now. Uh, I don't see how this could possibly work out in our favor. Uh, I mean, I guess we could do that really. Gee, that's I, that, that's just not worth it. You don't really get much for it, guys. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah, it's just irrelevant. It wouldn't make much of a difference. So maybe this one. And in that case, we would need to get that stability a little bit higher. Uh, we could, of course, promise peace again. Uh, promise peaceful ones. It just barely gives a bonus. It's like uh, from it goes up from 25% to to 33%. That's not a massive uh, jump. So it does seem we're no longer getting stability now. So do we have the ability to do another? And yeah, we're gonna want to have we're gonna have to keep doing these in order to keep that uh, stability ticking up. All right, so we can do another black shirt march, and we should build a complete one that doesn't put us at jeopardy of. Of civil war yeah at the worst case which would be that one the 31 there uh could also go over here in wells uh but that would also be too high uh, so yeah i'll have to go let's go here and go into scotland have our marches in scotland and there we go and we did get the extra research slot completed uh so that's going to be super helpful and let's see what we want to get next uh th we're still not able to get the fascist one yet just not there but we're almost there we're getting pretty close could go ahead and reinforce the Empire to get that extra stability. I think that'd be super helpful. Uh, it's a base stability as well, so that'd be helpful with these marches. So let's go ahead and do that. And we do have a motorcycle going by, guys. And if decolonization has not been achieved within two years of becoming communist, the Civil War will start. Interesting. All right, or maybe we're not going communist, but that's kind of cool that they have that, that uh, feature. All right, so uh, we've got enough going towards these. But we do need to get land doctrines and air doctrines as well. Uh, we've got the planes going already, I believe. Yes, sir. And we are in 1937, so I suppose we should go for 1937 text, which we also have a bonus for. Uh, so that's exactly what we'll do. 79 days, knock that out. All right. Uh, and again, not going to do the, the, the march in the highlands. And we are just about done with the episode, guys. I think, I think, we're, I think this is probably a good point to stop at. Uh, we got through the first year, which is what I wanted to do. Got some ship design and done too. And we really need to start building some, some military factories now at this point. Uh, I was trying to get those civilian factories built out. But you know what guys? Let's go ahead and say we're not gonna build that one. Get like a couple more civilian factories going and then after these three are done, uh, we will go ahead and start uh, working on military factories and dockyards. I think it's about time uh, start getting those. 
And then we're also going to need to go ahead and arrange the army. Uh, we'll get the army set up and the navy as well. Uh, start. I do want these guys to continue training, but they don't have to train in one spot, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, we'll get the, the navy set up. We'll get the army set up. Do all that kind of good stuff. Uh, figure out where exactly we're going to want to defend where our colonial troops are best place. Uh, I feel like the Italians should be able to handle Africa. Kind of hoping that the Italians can handle Africa for us. And we'll just protect like the Suez Canal. Make sure that Egypt doesn't fall. Yeah, I assume that's what we'd probably want to do with our troops there. And leave the rest of Africa and uh, Italy's, you know, leave that as for them, their job. They can take care of that. I don't I don't know how well we're going to be able to hold out here, but we will try and defend for the, the resources here. We'll try and defend it uh, in these two areas here. I'm not going to defend Australia. They should hopefully go defend themselves. So yeah, we will defend right there. So we'll send troops over there, and that's that's where we're going to be the majority of the places we defend. Uh, I don't think we'll, we'll have we'll have to pull all the troops from all of our colonial areas, uh, including here in Africa. I know that there are some useful resources here. So if Italy loses in Africa, then then does cause us some problems. But it's not enough to to warrant investing a bunch of troops here. I mean, yeah, I mean, the chromium helps, of course, uh, but. And we would end up short on Chromium if I did lose Africa. I'm just going to have to hope that we don't lose it. Uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. I'm just going to expect the Italians to take care of it. Uh, we do have a research slot available, though. I should probably go to get that going before we end the uh, end the episode. Uh, so what do we want to get? 1937. Uh, we don't have the tank design, so I'm not going to get that yet. Uh, I do have a research bonus here uh, that we're getting from Canada having researched it already. And uh, we could go ahead and get some of these here but i feel like we already have i believe we have two techs going towards ships so yeah we won't we won't do that i think we should either do i think we should start working on doctrines actually yeah i think that'd probably be oh wait a minute no 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 let's go in and get the uh construction too i forgot that uh it was 1937 and we had research bonuses so that's what we'll get i think that's the best use of it right now all right guys so uh going all right uh we have 47 percent fascist support uh so we're slowly getting up there uh, getting it done uh, and of course uh, Germany's going democratic already going down that route uh, so this should be a pretty interesting campaign I think see the Germans of the United States united uh, Japan the Soviet Union and France uh, all on the lines together um, yeah it should be uh, they're already at 10% communist support here so yeah they uh, are going down their route uh, Chinese would I assume be going down their route soon which result in them attacking the warlords and the French are currently at 37% communist. So everybody's kind of distracted right now, moving, changing ideologies. So if you enjoyed this first episode, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Also leave a comment. I do read and reply to all comments. If you're looking for any links, and look in the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our Facebook and Twitter, you know, all of our social media sites, as well as our Discord, if you'd like to join our community. And then there are also links to our PayPal and Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel, which is always appreciated, especially as I'm working a little bit less than I was before. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, if you're looking for any videos to watch in between uh, episodes, because I do put about one video out uh, every day with the exception of typically on Monday. Uh, I usually don't put it on Monday because I work a long shift on Sunday. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for any videos uh, in between these episodes here, uh, then go check out the front page of our channel. You'll find 2,000-something videos all sorted by genre, uh, including 20-something Way 4 campaigns. Uh, so you should be able to find something that you'd enjoy watching. So yeah, really excited to do this campaign again. This is the first time I played as the UK in the Man of the Guns expansion. So looking forward to, to the, all the naval conflict. I think that should be uh, pretty fun overall. It's kind of a bummer we haven't been able to participate in the, the Spanish Civil War. But yeah, looking forward to, to doing this campaign. Uh, so I hope to see you on the next episode. And thanks for watching, guys.